Hello people, this is Eric Cobra. And Ron Anaraja. And Warlord One. And even here. And this is Let's Play Lone Wolf Blind. Alright, who rem who of you children out there remembers what happened last time? I don't. It's been a long time, okay? I might. Okay, Rana, give it a shot. Alright, if I recall correctly, we were seeing one of these so-called Dark Lords in the company of this, uh, I was about to call him a shaykh, or at least ruler of this here kingdom, and they were planning on some kind of relic that they wanted to exchange in service for killing off us, or at least capturing us, yeah, and it turned out that... Yeah, but that's kind of only the last part. Yeah, okay, but I don't, do not record any, recall anymore. Give it here. No. <laughs> okay, let's see if it doesn't all come back to you. In any case, your ruler, the king of Magnamut, wanted to make a peace treaty with the ruler of Vasagonia, so he sent you to make the deal. The, when you arrived, you found out that the guy had kind of come down with a nasty case of being dead. And ah. his, uh, the one who took the throne home was kind of less than friendly disposed towards you, and had you arrested, thrown in the jail, and all your pretty stuff taken away from you. You then proceeded to kick your way out of the prison, beat up everyone who stood in your way, kick ass and take names, find your gear, kick more ass and take more names, run amok all throughout the palace, and then you found out that the guy who had you in prison is in league with a Dark Lord, who is searching for something called the Book of the Magna Kai, which is apparently a big deal, and in exchange there was something about a boom 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 boom. Ah, and in exchange for that and the death of you, he gave the ruler guy the Orb of Death. Which sounds like a delightful artifact. Mm. And that's kind of where it ended, because then the game itself went, okay, here's a breaking point. So, yeah. Does, did that refresh your memories? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Good. Alright, so you're standing in the throne room watching the conversation from above, I think it was. That's where you are, when suddenly, you catch sight of two warriors creeping towards you from a passage to your right. They are clad in jet black armor and scarlet robes, and their hideous death mask identify them as Drakarim warriors. They are men, but they are evil men, as evil as the Dark Lords whom they serve. One of them holds a razor fanged Akatas, a creeping leathery war dog, straining on a chain leash. The Drakar hisses and the Akatas springs towards your throat. Do you wish to fight the creature or try to evade the attack and escape? And we are back to evil exactly. Where's well, it? actually, I don't know if they are evil. You can't see how they look under their jet black armor. But the mask is, is hideous, if nothing else, if that's what you meant. Yeah, what were they called again? Drakarim. Drakarim. Yeah, okay, I just continue on writing this down. Yeah, I know. I will, yeah, fight or flight. I would fight. I would vote the same, but give an ear. Well, then we have two votes. Yep, so it's a fight. The Akatas leaps through the air at your face. You fall backward, kicking with both feet, but you, you are winded as the water jolts the air from your lungs. It slashes your shoulder. You lose one endurance point from that. Before cartwheeling over the edge of the stairs, it howl cut short as it smashes into the marble floor of the lower palace. Yeah. You're nasty. Yeah. I can already get pictures. <laughs> Fail. But yeah, you lost one point. You spring to your feet. The dog can do cartwheels. I don't think it intended to. <laughs> nice doggy. Now play dead. You're Good. Good acting, doggy. Yep. You spring to your feet and draw your weapon, for the Drakarim are running towards you. A terrible roar of hate and rage fills the hall. Kill him! The Drakarim unsheath their black swords, eager to obey their master. Oh, wait, that's the Dark Lord who yells that. I'm sorry. <clears throat> Kill him! The Drakarim unsheath their black swords, eager to obey their master's command. They attack you simultaneously. This sounds like a little more, if I may be. Fashionable equivalent of a, f well, I suppose fighting an our school would be. Yeah, well, you gotta give the um, Dark Lord credit. He has taught his 
his troops to synchronize their attacks. Yep, the one mm. wonders how much good that will do against you. All right, um, your combat skill was what again? Uh, let me see, let me see, let me see. It would be... 27? Um, 27, yeah, I think even is right. Yeah, 27 is what I get. 27, okay. Yep, all right. Well, in that case, give it here, you may roll the die. Okie dokie dokie. Ten. Right. You don't even blink before you flash your sword and cut the two men in pieces. You win. Damn! Am I, am I the only one who can see this with a lot of gore and very cartoony sound effects as they basically just get, well, flung all over the room? I imagine the, that you pull your sword in as a sound of a few slashes, and then the two just stand still. You re your sword, and then they fall to the ground in itty bitty slices. You mean receive, if that is a word. But yeah, sort of like a yeah, uh, katana. Yeah. yeah, sort of like a katana. But anyway, you killed two guys in one hit. Congrats. Oh, now we just need... Two now we just need, slice of one. Yeah. yeah. Now we just need someone to make those... We just need those uh, hiya, huya, hiya kind of effects, if, to be honest. But yeah, anyway, they dead. Just hope we do not run into any more of them. You glimpse the silhouette of Dark Lord Hokan, Hokan in the hall below, his spiked fist raised. There's a deafening crack as a bolt of blue lightning streaks from a stone in the Dark Lord's hand and hurtles towards you. You dive for cover behind the body of the Drakkar as the bolt explodes. In a flash of light, the Drakkar is gone. Only centers and the rotten odor of scorched flesh remain. Ooh, nasty. Yeah, well, if they weren't dead before, they sure as hell are now. I'll go so far yeah. as to say they are extra dead. Yeah, I can already imagine. Yeah, I think I lost a couple of limbs, but my armor held up and... Oh, shit, oh, shit, oh, shit! Ah! Boom. You scramble to your feet and sprint along the passage. Another bolt hurtles from the hall, tearing into the ceiling with shattering effect. Splinters of razor-sharp marble whistles down, slashing your cloak and tunic. You race down some stairs through a silver archway and along a balcony that overlooks the lower palace. A peal of bells and the crunch of iron shot boots echo in your ears. The Sarkhan has sounded the alarm. His guards close in on every side. Oops. Why do I just get the feeling this is going to be like a repetition of that scene from Kill Bill? At the end of the balcony are another arc and a staircase. Both look deserted. Do you wish to escape through the arc or race up the stairs? I would say the stairs. If anything, if they try and overrun us, at least we can try and kick them down the stairs. Yeah, good point. Height is an advantage, almost, wherever you go. Right. Unless Except you... Except we'll be trapped high up, but on the other hand, we might still be in the basement, that's so fast. Yeah, it would be more difficult to... Yeah, to, it would be more difficult to defend. Yeah. The blood is pounding in your ears as you pound up the marble steps. Twenty feet ahead of you, there's a landing with a stone door set into the wall. The stairs continue to ascend to a parapet, parapet walkway, at the end of which is another stone door, identical to the first. Suddenly the door on the first landing swings open and a palace guard wheels around to face you. Majan, he cries, fumbling for the hilt of his sword. Do you wish to attack him before he can draw his weapon, or would you well just push him aside and continue climbing the stairs? I say push him aside. Hmm. I mean, yeah. we can we can kill a lot of dudes, but I think show mercy if possible. Go the Jedi way. If anything, I think we need a little redemption from that poor, poor merchant. Well, this is an immersion. This it is people trying to following us, trying to kill us. Mm, yeah, I can sort of see where you're coming from, but I just see we have. I the think we should pu push him down, not because. Not exactly to show mercy, but because. It It'll take look. It'll take more time to draw a weapon. Mm. Okay, I vote for mercy, and I think Warlord does the same. So yep. Ah. A crossbow bolt grazes your shoulder as you reach the walkway. Oh wait. Yep. I guess you just pushed him away. A crossbow bolt grazes your shoulder as you reach the walkway, making you dive for cover behind its low parapet wall. You lose one endurance point. 
That very point we just earned from pushing this guy down is something we lose because of a flipping crossbow bolt. Two more bolts ricochet from the stone lip barely inches from your head. The stone door is shut, secured by an iron bolt on this side. To pull open the bolt, you'll have to expose yourself to crossbow fire, for the bolt is clearly in view above the lip of the wall. Do you wish to use your mind over matter skill? Yeah. yeah. Yes. You stare at the bolt, willing it to move. The sound of running footsteps behind you sends a cold shiver down your spine as you realize that the Dracarim are storming the stairs. Then slowly the bolt begins to move. As soon as it's clear, the bolt hole. As soon as it clears the bolt hole, you pull open the stone portal and race through, unaware of what lies beyond. Long live telepathy! Hmm, indeed. <laughs> the one skill I think everyone should have just for emergency. Beyond the portal lies a vaulted corridor leading to a grand staircase. You narrowly avoid confrontation with a dozen Dracarim, saved by your lightning reactions. As the enemy rush from an archway on the second floor landing, you dive behind a statue of the recently deceased Sarkhan Maudala. They are so intent on their chase that they fail to notice your hiding behind hiding place and hurry down the stairs, grunting in their heavy armor as they run. Suddenly you give thanks to Sarkhan Maudala. Suddenly you give thanks that Sarkhan Maudala was a very stout man and that his statue cast a very large shadow in which to hide. Hmm. Huh. Very nice of him that he even helps in a way from the afterlife. At the top of the stairway, you discover a hatch which gives you access to the roof. You climb through it and follow a path of sun bleached tiles that wind in and out of the domes and turrets, eventually leading to the to a bell tower. You're exhausted and need to rest. Your mind still full of the shock of your encounter with Dark Lord Hokan. The sound of his terrible voice repeating the words "Book of the Magna Kai." echoes again and again in your mind. With desperation sapping your will, you peer out through a grill in the bell tower. The sight before you renews your flagging hope, for it inspires a daring escape plan. Huh. Below the bell tower you see a line of Itika pens, each with its own circular landing platform. Itikas are a breed of huge black birds that nest in iris behind the peaks of the Dahia and Vakar mountains. The Vasagonians have long since tamed these giants of the skies, using them as winged mounts for their army leaders, their scouts, couriers, and envoys. Hmm. An Itika and rider swoop down out of the reddening sky and alight upon the platform nearest to the bell tower. Slaves hurl a rope to the rider, who in turn fixes it to a saddle ring before he jumps to the ground. The Itika calls and beats its huge wings as it is slowly winched into the pen by a hidden capstan. The rider and the slaves leave the platform. There's now only one sentry on guard at the pen. If you can overpower him, you can make your escape on the back of the giant bird. Um, do you, you can use your blowpipe and sleep dart here. Let me see just how many we have here. Let me see. Hmm. Boom, 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 boom. Let me see. I had it noted down here somewhere. Maybe over more useful items. Yeah, we have a blowpipe with a single sleep dart. Let's well, draw then, that. Well, then let's blow the pipe. Alright. <laughs> or you need. Yeah. Yeah, taking care to load the blowpipe correctly, you raise the unfamiliar weapon to your lips and take aim. The sentry is standing very still. He makes a perfect target. You inflate your cheeks and fire. And roll the die. You have weapon skill, haven't you? Let me see weapon skill, weapon skill. Yeah, hmm. but I don't think it's... No, we have weapon skill, but it is focused in mazes. Yeah, but it says if you have uh, weapon skill in any weapon, you can add two to this. I guess because oh yeah I don't know we can we can hey. add two. yep so yeah we can add plus two combat skill that's great Go. do it all right give it here roll the die and add two okay I'll just, roll the die and just four. pray we do not oh four in total I guess yep 